Thank you for introduction. I am Sasaev, a president of uh, JIIA. Can you listen to me? Can you hear me? Yes. Well, this is Sunday, but uh, thank you for participating in this open webinar organized by the Japan Institute of International Affairs on considering the 21st century from the perspective of 20th century East Asian history, organized by JIIA. Well, uh, the theme of the webinar is to think about today's East Asia uh, based on uh, the book published by the University of Tokyo Press, edited by Professor Tanaka and Professor Kawashima. And I think of uh, today's East Asia from the perspective of that book. The three book, uh, volume book was a compilation of the research results of the international research project on the 20th century East Asian history carried out by our institute between 2016 through 2018. I attended symposiums held as part of this project in July 2018 and December 2019 and listened to speeches of Professor Tanaka, who will give a keynote speech today, and of other experts. Well, today's aim is to look at the 21st century based on the outcome of this research. After the keynote speech, three panel discussion sessions by uh, renowned contributors and experts who represent Japan will be held, each session corresponding to each volume of the book. We expect the discussions on a complicated development of East Asia from the era of colonial rule, world wars, to the time East Asia becoming a dri driver of global economy. I will be very happy if this webinar becomes an opportunity for us and the audience to look back the history of this region and think how it is related to the current challenges it faces, such as Hong Kong and Myanmar. I would like to close my opening remarks by thanking Dr. Tanaka and all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sasai. So now, without further ado, we'd like to start the keynote speech. And we have the president of GRIPS, Dr. Akihiko Tanaka. Dr. Tanaka, please. I'm uh, Akiko Tanaka from uh, GRIPS, and as has already been mentioned, the webinar this time is uh, for the authors of the book published last year, 20th Century East Asia, a New History, uh, to talk about uh, the present East Asia. And uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is still uh, rampant in the world, and we see that international relations and the societies of nations are uh, fluid. And in order to precisely understand the present situation, it is indispensable that we know what happens in the past. And with regards to the specific uh, developments, we will have a discussion among the authors and so, from my side, I would like to talk about what is in the background of what this book aims at. In other words, with regards to the awareness of issues, I would like to give a brief explanation. So, we heard from Mr. Sasai just now. Uh, the basis of this book is that uh, the Japan Institute of International Affairs was consigned with an international joint history study project by the Japanese government. And the project started in July of 2016. And since that time, there have been three joint uh, meetings and symposiums. And based on that, uh, the project participants had written a paper. And 
this paper is further revised and we have compiled it into a book. And in uh, starting this uh, project, that is in starting the research, what we confirm is that we will be aware of present East Asia or East Asia in the 21st century and then uh, to try to review or rewrite history. And it used to be, uh, at least for myself when I was young, when you talk about East Asia, it was considered to be a region that was stagnant and behind. And around 1960s, if you look at East Asia, both Northeast and Southeast Asia, this area was considered to be poorer than Sub-Sahara Africa. And in the latter part of the 1960s, there is uh, Professor Mueller of uh, uh, Development uh, Economics, and he wrote the Asian drama. Why is Asia so behind? Why is economic development going forward? That was the theme of his work. And so in the East Asian history written in the 20th century, was written from the perspective of why is Asia lagging behind and why is it not uh, developing. However, East Asia right now, needless to say, is one of the most dynamically developing regions in the world. And there are many countries with a very high standard of living in the world. It used to be in the past that Japan was the only one to join the developed nations group, but now Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, the per capita GDP is at, uh, at one of the highest levels of the world. So why is it that uh, one of the poorest uh, regions in the world became a region uh, that is dynamic? most dynamically uh, growing in the world. That is the first awareness of the issues. Secondly, East Asia right now has some vulnerabilities, but compared to Middle East and Sub-Sahara Africa, there are no wars among nations or no major civil wars, so it is a peaceful region, but that used to not be the case in East Asia. East Asia in the 20th century so civil wars and war between nations constantly taking place. And from the 1920s in China, there has been civil war. And in the 1930s too, since the Manchurian incident, there have been wars and then World War II and then the war in the Asia Pacific. And even after that ended, there have been uh, the Vietnam War and Korean War, so East Asia was where there was the most uh, frequently occurring uh, wars. And then in 1979, since the Sino-Vietnamese War, we haven't seen the war among nations. And after the Cambodian Civil War ended, we have not seen large-scale civil wars. And uh, after the 1980s, East Asia finally entered into the post-war age. So why is it that the East Asia, which had uh, seen so many wars, had become a peaceful region? That is the second awareness of the issues. Thirdly, what we can understand through observation of present East Asia is that the political systems of the region is quite diverse. You have Japan and Korea, which is a liberal uh, democracy. And along with that, you have China, Vietnam, and this is uh, ruled by uh, the uh, Communist Party, party state system. And then you have Mam Myanmar and Thailand, where they have authoritarian system with uh, big influence by the military. Then you have Singapore and Malaysia, and they're economically developed, but their system is this difficult to describe simply. Hong Kong is not a country, but China takes the one country, two system uh, regime. So it is also very complicated. And this one country, two systems is uh, right now in flux. But uh, in this way, in East Asia, you have uh, unique and diverse uh, political systems. 
So why is it that you have such unique and diverse political systems in this region? That is the third awareness of the issues. So if we think uh, simply, it's very difficult to answer these three questions. And in this project, as a method to approach these three questions, we take an overview of the history of international relations, and we re-study uh, the process of nation building in each country. The characteristic of the present uh, global system is that uh, you have uh, uh, territory, territorial states which have mutually ex exclusive territories, that the international system and uh, those global go economy were going beyond uh, borders, uh, there is a connection and both have coexisted. And uh, so you have at the same time uh, these uh, systems in the world. So you have an international relationship where both uh, war and peace are possible. And then you have the global economy where the economy is uh, interlinked in a interdependent way. And each country tries to protect its independence and uh, form its national system. And domestically, there have been adjustments made in the relationship between the market and society. Therefore, in this uh, project, uh, first of all, there are papers which uh, provide an overview, both politics, military, and economy, to the history of international relations. And secondly, papers to study the path of nation building of each country. And so the first chapter is the introduction of the history of international relations. And then uh, the second book is the histories of individual states in Northeast Asia. And the third volume is the history of individual states in Southeast Asia. So it is comprised of three uh, volumes. And by reading it, uh, you will be able to better understand how the present East Asia was formed. The webinar this time, you could say, is based on such a background and to review the present system with that uh, perspective. And uh, the webinar was planned with that in mind. And for detailed analysis of the present situation, that will be taken up in the panel discussion. But uh, as the compiler, the editor of uh, these uh, books, I would like to mention some uh, useful points. That is, uh, as uh, uh, the editor, thinking about the present state of East Asia and what will take place in the future, there are a number of key points that can be mentioned. That is, East Asian history in the 21st century is what we're talking about and looking at this long process. The first thing that I notice is that uh, the there is a deepening of the connections in East Asia. Although this book is entitled The History of East Asia in 20th Century, yet it starts with discussing international relationship before 20th century, that is uh, 19th century and before, and then uh, describe up to the dawn of 21st century. By looking at such a long period of time, we see that the relationship and linkage among states have strengthened more in 20th century than 19th century, and then farther in 21st century than in 20th century. World is connected uh, in economic terms, but uh, compared to the relationship among advanced economies, in many cases, we have seen uh, the weaker relationship uh, among Asian countries. For instance, Japan has a strong relationship with the United States and Northeast Asia, and yet the relationship between the Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia was not that strong. And politically, as well, the international politics of Northeast Asia, in many respects, were separated from that uh, in Southeast Asia. However, then this ex 
region experienced the two world wars and the Cold War as well as hot war under Cold War and eventually the relationship became stronger. And then after 1980s, the post-war period started in East Asia and China uh, adopted open reform policy and strengthened its economic relationship with Southeast Asia. Under rapid globalization in 1990s and onward, the, almost all the countries in East Asia experienced a fast economic growth driven by the peace that was prevalent in this region. In other words, for, for the first time, uh, once uh, the post-war era started uh, since 1980s, the East Asia started to prosper. Second, I would say that the nation building in East Asia is a work in progress, not stable yet. The, yet, many of the countries uh, that are democratized seem to be in a stable path. Countries such as Korea, Taiwan, and Asia, when the question was raised whether the democratization of those countries is possible, I would say that the many experts in this region uh, held rather a skeptical view on that. Yet, in those uh, three countries, I don't think uh, there are many scholars or experts who consider that the democracy in those three countries and region would be overturned, well as in the case of the Philippines. They hope that this would be further pursued in the following discussion. At, on the other hand, a single party ruling system, the party state system uh, seems to be sus uh, sustainable in terms of their regime. Uh, China, Vietnam, Laos, uh, PDR, uh, the, even North Korea, uh, their political regime uh, seems to be quite stable. Yet, they some point out that uh, there is a major fragility in those party state system. What would be the outlook of those regions uh, under such a system? This is another point that I'd like to propose uh, for panel discussion today. And it is uh, well known that uh, there are countries where regime is quite unstable, such as Myanmar that experienced coup d'etat in February this year, Thailand, uh, the after uh, transition to civil uh, the government, the, there seems to be some unstable factors. Uh, and also the Malaysia, uh, their uh, path to democratization is not quite stable. And what about Singapore? That's another point. I hope uh, further discussion will take place in the panel discussion. So uh, the East Asia, uh, region and does it continue to experience a twist and turns and I believe uh, the key to that has to do with international relationship. Well Japan uh, post-war period started after 1945 but uh, in the case of East Asia that was after 1980s and that was the the key to prosperity. When economy uh, they linked those regions so closely and then I hope that uh, no one would uh, think about uh, the staging of war. And yet, the peace uh, supported by mutual economic uh, dependence is not solid enough. On the other hand, we are seeing some rising tension uh, in a military context in East Asia, for instance, in Taiwan Strait. Once there is armed conflict, uh, that could produce even more serious uh, impact than uh, the crisis that was experienced some time ago that could uh, produce a heavy blow to East Asia as well as world economy. Uh, the international relationship has uh, produced an impact on to post-war East Asia. And for those countries that experienced the democracy, the peace was uh, the tailwind for them. On the other hand, on the, other hand the party state system countries also enjoyed development thanks to peace, whether it is China or Vietnam. The economic growth uh, offered legitimacy to their regime under peace. And even in the case of North Korea, in the absence of war, they can still manage to sustain their regime, even when they failed economic growth. Of course, as in the case of Myanmar, the international relationship alone cannot direct political setup. On the other hand, under international relationship, when the peace is maintained, and then that would just serve as uh, the, the foundation for prosperity, 
leading to political stability as well in many countries and regions in East Asia. The, the multitude of political regimes have been maintained thanks to peace for that sense of for the, in that context, I hope that uh, the prosperity and the multiple political set of foundation in East Asia is uh, supported uh, the, in the absence of uh, if they, this region would not develop into pre-war period and hope that the post-war period would continue in this region. I hope that the detailed discussion will ensue uh, in the panel discussion afterwards. And with this, I'd like to conclude my keynote presentation. Thank you.